So, <clears throat> my name is Michael Norton, um, and I've just come into hospital to meet David Nash, uh, who's been maintaining innocence <clears throat> for an alleged crime that he spent five and a half years in prison for. Yeah, long. Time. So, what were you actually convicted of? Uh, conspiracy on three counts of uh, production of the alleged production of uh, amphetamine, class B, uh, ecstasy, class A, and uh, what people know as crystal meth, also class A. That's what you were convicted of. Convicted of. And did you commit that crime? Certainly not. No, I, um, I would never do those things. I'm not that sort of person. Um, anyone that actually knows me knows A, that I wouldn't have the, the guts to even think about probably doing it as yeah. such, let alone make some sort of what they called in, in the court a uh, concluded agreement uh, to produce any of these things. I didn't have any wherewithal. Um, I had no money at the time. I, I certainly had no premises to do it upon. Um, there, were, there were never any Did they ever find any drugs? No, never found any criminal. How never. old are you? I'm uh, 65 now. Have you ever been in trouble for a serious crime before? No, not a serious crime, no. They're never drugs, nothing. No, so certainly nothing. You are now in hospital. Yeah. You contracted cancer while you were in prison? Uh, yeah. And you were being treated in prison? No. You weren't being treated in no, prison? No, uh, whenever I had bookings to uh, go out to the hospital, they were frequently cancelled by uh, prison management. The, the doctors had ordered me to go, uh, but when when it came to the time of the appointment to go, they said, oh, we haven't got enough staff to take you. That happened repeatedly. So you were, when were you diagnosed? That, that wasn't diagnosed until I came to the um, category D part of the prison system. And that was, uh, that was diagnosed within a very short space of time. And they, they didn't have the staff to accompany you? That was their excuse. Treatment? That was the excuse that they used at the time, yes. And so you came out of prison in August of this year? Uh, I, I came out of prison totally finished that part of my sentence um, and you see uh, the 23rd of August of this year and I today from, is the 4th of October uh, well, well I came from um, HMP Swellside which is a, a B category uh, high security prison um, and I came out of there on the, um, uh, the uh, 18th of March after three previous attempts allegedly to bring me to um, HMP Press Boyd, yeah. um, of which there is photographic evidence in this uh, case. Um, and I went there after being told three times and, and literally emptying everything out of my cell that I'd be going that day and then to be kept waiting in reception at well, so and then sent back to my cell. Yeah. Only that on the third time um, I went back and someone had already now <coughs> occupied my old cell. So I had to be thrown into another cell that had no heating in it. Gosh. And this was in the middle of February. And uh, I was feeling bitterly cold. The temperatures were down to 12 degrees at times. Um, I did complain. I had and no health care. diagnosed with cancer? No, not at that time. I hadn't been diagnosed because I hadn't been to the hospital because they stopped me from going. Uh, <clears throat> and anyway, uh, then when I got to Prescoy, um, the, the effects of being locked in that cell yeah. uh, manifested themselves as... Um, a pneumonia, where I had a, um, a what's called a pleural effusion at the lower base of my of my right lung, and uh, when that was all tested, they found that I had small cell lung cancer, and that was the first time that they knew, and I think that that was diagnosed on just after the weekend of um, Easter weekend of this year, 2019. Yeah. So you've been out of prison now for let's say five to six uh, weeks since the 23rd of August. About five or six weeks. Yes. And they've now said that you've got small cell lung cancer that's incurable. And they've said to you that you... Oh, well, I'll die. And what, what, what kind of prognosis have they given you? Um, they haven't exactly, but I'm unlikely to be, be alive at uh, the Christmas at the end of this year, 2019. Okay, well, <clears throat> the reason I've come today is because, you know, we've been communicating about your wrongful conviction. We've met a couple of times. Yes. I think yes. three times before, maybe four. Yes. Because you know you've been talking to me about your case. Yes. And I'm coming to hospital to see you today because yes. because I understand that you're still working while you're in hospital. Yes. Well, my even though we're now in October, yes. and they're saying to you you may not be alive until you may not see Christmas. That's you're right. You're still working. Yes. I've got my um, my my case documents are here. Some of this 
here is um, NHS materials here. So I'll get that out of the way, but basically I had to um, reformat a computer uh, while I was here because it had a virus in it, but I actually reformatted and reset this computer and stayed up all night to do that. In this bag of some why, of my case Why, papers. if you've been given two or three months to live, why are you working on your case? Uh, because it's so important that people know the truth. Because the police are concealing everything. National Crime Agency, Haven and Somerset Police, and the Crown Prosecution Service are trying to bury this case. Because they know that false evidence was given in this case by trial experts. And they know that I can prove that that evidence is false. Where well, they described some components from a unit that belongs to my biodiesel business and they've turned those components into something that they're definitely not. This is easily provable by the manufacturer's evidence themselves. The evidence is available in the public domain, it's online on their own website and that evidence will be used against police officers so, and yet their so experts. Even though you've been given this prognosis, yes, you still want to carry on fighting on your case every yes. day? Because whilst I've been in prison, it's not only me that's suffering from this. I know of dozens of people personally who've had the same treatment from the police and the CPS. Different police forces, different units of the CPS, they all respond in exactly the same way. When you discover the corruption, they bury it. The, the Independent Police Complaints Commission did nothing to put it right. They just changed their names to become the Independent Office of Police Complaints with all the same people in all the same seats. Yeah. So it's, You've got no trust or faith in there's it. No, you can't have faith in any of these people. You start there, like I did, as a mug, believing that the system was fair. Mug? Oh, because you believed in it. Because you believed in it. Yeah. I did believe in the system. I totally believed in it. I went to try the appeal system. You've got no money to fight an appeal. You are on your own. You are fighting the whole state system. And you, and, and you haven't got a chance. It's only when you unearth solid evidence and you continue to get them to prove that they're lying, lying, lying all the way. They'll just lie to cover up what they've done. And they don't care about the truth, they don't care about reality, they care about the fact that you've been convicted, they're happy with that and that's all they want to hear. And this does include defence lawyers, by the way. <laughs> really? Yeah. <coughs> yeah so I don't, don't want to go too far on that at this point in time. I'm still alive, however, I will leave back behind some evidence when I go. So any lawyers involved need to get ready for it. Oh my gosh. So, with regard to the future then, you're just going to carry on working? I will stop until the day I die. I won't stop until the day I die. This will happen. This has to be done. There are people in prison that quite frankly have died because of this. Sorry. It's alright. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It is upsetting. What's that? That's okay. It's okay. It's emotional. It is. Yeah. It is. That, that man died instantly because they can't take it. In places, evil places like Swells. Yeah. Where they'll just throw someone like me in a house and I'm back into a freezing cold cell and tell you if you'd have told me about it, I've got the evidence in black and white. If you'd have told me about it, I might have been able to offer you a blanket or a jumper. Yeah. So the fight goes on. And these men <clears throat> who have been in prison. So that, as I was to say, so the fight goes on. Yeah, the, yeah, the fight goes on, never stops. Never. <coughs> Thank you, David.